Right, guys. Welcome back to Dale King. And, guys, today we're going to be talking about setups. How to make your own setups and what things do and how you adjust them. Especially after this new BOP. So, let's get to it. So, I'm just going to work my way through the taps, okay? And if you have any questions, ask and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Best of as, as, as my knowledge, okay? So, Canva. Let's start there. People always ask me, what do I do with Canva? Where should I, where should I increase or decrease my Canva? So, most tracks that are very tight, so Zanville, are on max Canva, depending on temperature, right? Tracks like Spa, you don't really need to. Monza, you're around the 3.5 to 3.7. You know, tight, twisty tracks, brands hatch. But, but if you're running in really hot temperatures, you need to reduce the camera. It helps with wear. Okay. And you'll see this number here. You see this OMI number. You never really want the inside or the hottest point to be above, say, 93. 93 is the limit. Anything above that, the surface of the tire is too hot. You slide in. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to burn your tires up. Okay. Best way to reduce that for sure is reduce your camber. Okay, maybe reduce a little bit of toe, open the ducts up, try to keep them as cool as possible, in my opinion. Within range, you need to think about your brakes as well. You really need to think about, okay, if I open my ducts wide, you're going to lose braking performance. And it's a big, after your last update, this is a big thing now. This is a really big thing. Okay, so really do think about that. Um, caster, so increasing the caster makes the wheel feel heavier, but it also exaggerates the camber as well. Like it makes the cam, so instead of it being 3.5, it'll be 3.9 if you increase the cam, but if you increase the caster right up, increasing friction, uh, slowing you down a little bit. So I normally, on ACC, especially for the DD, I do increase it a little bit just to, just to get a bit of feeling. Okay. Front toe. You always run negative front toe. For me in the BMW, for sure. Obviously, we all know at the minute the toe trick is running max negative toe. It gives you more turning with more straight line speed. So at the minute, keep it at max, basically. Especially if you're in a BMW or you're in any other car, you're looking at max negative toe on the front for sure with max camber. But once this gets fixed, guys, you want to go back to what you normally use. And I, in the BMW, Aston Mine, um, around 0 0.1 to 0 0.12. Anything else, like Ferrari, Audi, I'm around 0 0.5 to 1. I don't really feel like I need to go higher than that. Because of the rear engine cars, they rotate a lot more. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Obviously, the more you increase your toe, front and rear, the more you're going to increase the wear and it increases friction. Okay, so um, it'll heat the tire up more. So, colder conditions, you, you, you can run max camber fine without any wear. You know? Right, to the rear. Oh, as well, guys, this is, this is, people do ask, the optimal tyre pressure is 27.7. Well, it's actually, it's actually, to be absolutely pinpoint accurate, it's 27.6.7. So it's high 26s, low 27s. So I always try to aim, always try to aim for that 20, uh, 27.7 mark. Now, the rear toe on the rear. This pre-update, obviously, negative rear toe really does help. I found around negative three, but once this gets patched... What does the toe do? So, 0, 0.0, the wheels are basically dead flat. Okay. Now, when you start increasing the toe, it starts to pitch them out. I'll pitch them in a little bit, sorry. So, this increases rear traction, especially on corner exit. This will, this will allow the car to get better traction on exit. So, I don't know if any of you guys have ever come out of a slow corner and you're just wheel spinning, hard to control the car. Give it a little click, maybe one or two. Don't so you don't on ACC. Don't over click. Like one or two clicks really is a big effect on ACC. Okay, so don't just wax it, whack it up to maximum. For me personally, I never really go above 0.8 on the on the BMW. That's even in full wet. Okay, so at the minute I'm like negative zero plus one where I need to be, but I know one this pack when this patch gets fixed, I'm probably going to be around a 0.5 mark where I used to be. Okay. 
So rear camber on the rear can have a little bit of a different effect as well. Max rear camber can cause a little bit of... You have really good rotation through the fast corners because obviously max camber it makes the wheels point up a little bit like this, right? So when you go around a fast corner, it's actually flat and you've got loads of grip. Loads of grip. Do you know what I mean? So imagine the wheels like that. Max camber points them in like this, you know? So when you go around a corner, it's like max. Do you know what I mean? So just think about think about that through the high speed stuff. Um, like I said, most quality sessions I run max camber, and then I just reduce it in the race just to save a bit of tire wear. This can uh, this can definitely definitely help. Traction control in the BMW traction control is not very good, and it has loads of power, loads of power. So you're always trying to find the right place. Nils, Amir running two. I can't seem to make that work at the minute with, with my setup. So I'm around the three mark. Um, three, three to five. And in the wet, I'm around the six or seven mark, depending on how wet it is. Also, another trip. Try and look at this here. You can see the, the traction control, right? You can see TC one and two is meant to be where it's rubbered, green track. But also, look at the wear. So when your when your tires start to go off a go off a little bit, why not whack it up one TC? So from three to four, and it will help. It will help with um a tiny bit of uh you know um sorry on the ABS, this will help with a tiny bit of locking up. You know, so sometimes you'll see me through the stint, especially on long stints, I'll go from like three to four or something like that. Okay. Brake pads. Brake pads one, R4 quality guys, R4 quality. You do not run them, I do not, I only run them in like temperatures, anything below like 10 degrees, I go to 2.2. Two. Cause pad, brake pads one only work in pretty warm temperatures. You like normal temperatures. When you go below too hot or too, like too cold or too hot, I run 2.2. Two. 2.2 two, two are better in the wet as well. There, there's not as much friction, so you don't get as much locking up. So yeah, a 3.3 three are meant to be the best brake pads for the wet. But I've always found 2-2 two -two, uh, uh, are the best pads. They just stop the locking. They stop the locking. Obviously, everyone knows how to set a UI, you know, how to select wet tires, you know. Oh, brake pads 4 as well. This is always a talking, a talking point. So brake pads 4 are an experimental brake pad. And this is actually, this is actually meant to be last. I actually tested these the other day, and I actually found a bit of time on the brakes. They only last like a lap or two. But they're actually very good, but they only work in certain conditions, you know, and I'm not going to give that information away, not unless you're one of my patrons. <laughs> but yeah, very good stuff. Right, mechanical grip. Let's start from the top. Anti-roll bar. Where would I run it stiff? Where would I run it soft? Okay, and, and, and this really does depend on how you set a car up. You know, how the, how's the best way to explain this? So say if I was, say this is my setup, right? I'm 6'6", six, six, my springs are like this. Say this is all, all set up how I'd, how I'd have the car. And now I'm going into like a corner and the car's unlocked. Like as I'm on the brakes and turning in, the rear, like I've got oversteer. But the car feels like it's turning in fine. I've got too much rotation. What I would do, if my springs and my dampeners are all good, I would increase increase the anti-roll bar one click just to help stabilize the car what it would do it would just push a little bit more understeer into the front and it would uh, control the rear now reverse effect if i was going into a corner and i can't get the car turned in i have understeer i would lower this you know and, and the anti-roll bars really do affect the slow speed cornering so for slow speeds lowering them will give you more turning Hiring them will give you more understeer. Now, in in high speed corners, low anti roll bars, right, will make the car unbalanced because the, because the car's not stiff, it allows the car to pitch and roll too much. And then in ACC, like a GT3 car, if it rolls too much, it unloads the inside wheels or outside wheels because it's too much roll, and you'll you'll have under like snap understeer or snap oversteer and it's really hard to control the car so places like silverstone always high anti-roll bars you know because you're trying you're trying to keep the car level under high like especially from Megan to Beck, it's a very high speed um change of direction you're running them pretty high you know so yeah i would say places like zanville i run pretty low uh brands hatch pretty low you know uh for sure 
but then high speed circuits ones up spa they're normally on the highish side um but you need to fill this out for yourself you really do but definitely when you, <laughs> another thing when you go too high though especially on the rear i've noticed you can break and as you turn in the car will just understeer because the car's too stiff and it's just got no no grip you know this is just because the car's too stiff and it won't allow any roll in the car so be careful with that as well um doing that brake power i never change the brake power always running 100 percent brake bias in the wet i'm always minimum always minimum in the bmw i'm around 53 oh now um i feel like that's the best the best place for me at the minute 53 oh Aston Martin, the same, I'm around 54. What, what effects does, does brake bias have? So if you have the brake bias too rearward, it can lock the rear and the car can oversteer into, into corner entry. How do I tell the difference between anti-roll bars, you may be saying, and brake bias? It, it's a hard one to judge, but it'll be on the last bit of entry into the corner as well that, that you'll notice it's the brake bias the stillness you know and also 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 try if you so how else can a brake bias affect the car through high speed corners having it more rearward will give you more rotation but but it can make the car more unstable so say if you've got loads of rotation and you don't really want to change an anti-roll bar or or your springs or something sometimes there's a few clicks of brake bias a little bit more forward will help control the car it will help it a little bit it will keep it a little it's only a tiny thing but it can make a big difference sometimes and it can really help now breaking into a high speed like breaking into say turn one to monza you always see people putting the brake bias rearward so what this will do this will allow the car to slow down quicker because the brake bias more rearward it just it just it just enables that and you, and you actually get a little bit more rotation you can actually trail brake a little bit better to the corner but again in high speed corners brake bias too rearward will make the rear snap and you'll have a lot of oversteer you know so you've got to be really careful of where you have your brake bias especially at like spa and stuff this can uh, really affect the car but like i said in the dry i'm always around 53 r in the bmw and I, in every car i always run minimum maybe one or two clicks off in the wet okay right steer ratio so steer ratio decreases or increases the sensitivity of the wheel basically so i like 14 to 15 maybe sometimes on the tight track 13 this is just this is just dependent if you feel like you're turning in and you can feel the wheel scrubbing maybe just go one click open um if you feel like you don't have enough feeling in the wheel come down a couple of clicks this 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 can help this can really really help right springs so as you can see here with our springs if we stiffen the spring rate you can see they go goes up a tiny bit so max spring rates on the on on the front this is the hardest spring you can put in your car now this will make the car very stiff on the front where would you run stiff spring rates <sighs> maybe mount panorama um you don't really have so brands actually be pretty soft springs because the track's very bumpy if you have stiff stiff springs on a bumpy track the car just jumps and you're just going to lose traction it's not the car's not going to absorb the bumps properly you know and and you're going to be skipping everywhere so you need to find that that correct balance for me I, um i find more with the front engine cars i'm a little ways a little bit lower i've never run max i'm always around like this mark a couple of clicks off unless unless i was trying to make like a full quality setup like absolute one lap challenge maybe i've got a really low wing or something then i would run really really high wheel rates on the front because the car was so oversteery and probably looking for like a lot of traction off the rear you know with like maybe a low spring rate on the rear but yeah so that, that that i think that's the best way to uh, to sort of so where where would i run high springs really uh maybe spa on the front they'd be pretty high just because obviously the uh, and silverstone actually that again this will help control the pitching of the car soft springs will help will allow the car to roll too much as well right bump stop rate 
bomb stop rate is the rubber mount above the spring basically which allows the suspension so say that's your suspension arm this sits on top like that and the higher you go with a bump stop rate the basically the stiffer the rubber is in here and the softer it is it'll allow it to push past like it can go up inside of it and squash it like a rubber like trying like a rubber in school when you do this this will allow now the stiffest version of that will allow no movement so if you find your car as well this is just like the bump stop rate is a fine tuning tool i would say you know if you feel like your spring rate's good uh the dampeners are good but you're breaking into a corner and the car's just dipping down you can feel it just a bit too much increase the bump stop rate a little bit and this will help maybe to stiffen that just that fine touch and it will stop that when you turn in it will stop a bit of oversteer rotation do you know what I mean? But also, increasing the bump stop rate on the front will give, give you a bit of understeer, reducing it will give you a little bit more turning. It can, it's like a fine tuning tool, for sure. You can actually see, and now the camera doesn't do anything, bump stop range on the front. So, what, you, what is the bump stop range? The bump stop range is how far the spring and the bump stop rate can travel. So, if I run a max bump stop range, this will allow the, the wheel to go right up into the arch and probably the, the, the floor panel, the, the, the panel of the car at the bottom to touch the floor. This will create an aero stall. You don't want that to happen, you know? So you never see anyone running max bump stop range. And also this will allow the car to pitch to its maximum ability. Do you know what I mean as well? So another way to, to sort of correct oversteer Especially corner entry, right? Maybe your bump stop ranges are too much. You know, the bump stop ranges could do two or things. Do do one or two things. If you increase your bump stop range, they're going to allow to have a little bit more slow speed rotation for sure. But they can unsettle the car. Now, if I lower them, it's going to give me a little bit less rotation, but it's going to also not allow the car to pitch as much, and it's going to keep the car stable. So finding the right wheel rate with the right bump stop range with the right bump stop rate as well can be difficult and as we all call this game you know it's a setup simulator more than atc and it is really interesting and, and there's one thing that there's not one way to set a car up you can set the car up you know stiff soft you know you need to find a way to, to set this up for yourself you know for sure for sure also harder wheel rates on the front will give you a little bit more understeer lower wheel rates on will will, will allow will allow a little bit more turning okay hopefully everyone sort of understands that wheel rate on the rear again same thing stiffer wheel weight on the rear will give you great fast corner rotation you know magnets and beckets will feel nice and nice and easy but slow speed stuff you have a lot of wheel spin on exit you know finding the right springs there it, it, it's just personal preference you know if you're if you're gentle on the accelerator you can probably run it a little bit stiffer Again, I always find myself around this sort of mark, you know. I do find I have run maximum on the rear on the BMW just to make it rotate because it does have that little bit of understeer, you know, especially in the acid as well. But lower will give you more traction at a slow speed, but then higher will give you more stability and more rotation, even slow speed and middle speed and high speed corners. Again, bump stop range and rates and ranges do the exact same effect, basically, on the rear higher will will give you on so what it'll do it'll allow the car to squat so the bump stop range on the rear if you hire this number it's going to allow the car to squat so go faster in a straight line and it's going to allow it doesn't allow as much rotation on power because the car's squatting you know so lowering it it's really weird so if you lower it to zero the car's not going to squat it's just going to want to rotate you know because you're not allowing the rear to sort of come down you know you, the car's going to stay up higher and this is going to allow a bit more rotation but on zero you're not going to have much grip do you know what i mean so it, it's hard to, to to sort of balance the rear um 45 they're not really going to initiate i think it's around 50 actually in between 45 and 50 there's no initiation on the bump stop at all on the rear that you need to check for your car in in motec this will um you know so you may say to me okay now where would i run a higher bump stop range anyway so places i don't know maybe somewhere like um it's difficult to say actually depending on car where where you would want it and where you wouldn't want it 
So you want to, I'd say, another expectation, another play, Silverstone, I always want the car to sort of hit the bump stops, especially through Maggots and Beckets, because what this does, this allows the rear not to go too far, especially if I've got the springs right, um, and the car's pitching a little bit too much, you reduce your bump stop range to stop the car on the rear or the front pitching too much. It'll hit the bump stop and it'll keep it a level level platform and it'll allow the corner to go, it'll allow the car to go through the corners at, at a decent speed without pitching too much. But again, if you go too low with it, you're not going to allow squat in low corners. So you need to find that right balance. You know, you don't want it resting on the, resting on the bump stops too much because what happens when you break, your initial full break, it will go to the bump stops and then it will come off and then cause understeer, oversteer. Do you know what I mean? So be very careful about... You, you need to use Motec to find them bump stop ranges and play about of them for sure. For sure. I'm always around... Well, it's hard to say. I'm not always around 35, but I do run some tracks 25, some tracks 55 where I don't want them to engage at all. You know? Okay, preload. Low preload. So basically, a locked diff... So if I've done this, this locks the diff. So on corner entry, I have a nice stable rear end. On corner exit, both wheels are going to be spinning at the same time. Now, this does create a lot of on-throttle understeer, but I, I can also carry a lot of speed on entry. Now, if I wanted, say, to go through Suzuka, and I had too much... So I, I went on the throttle, I turned in, and as I come off the throttle, the car's understeering. I would lower my diff. I would lower my diff and this allows the nose to just sort of bite in a little bit more and it will allow the car to rotate okay i think that's the best way to explain that i think in my opinion in my in my, in my opinion right there you know in the wet i run it low i'm always around a 150 mark and then i go maybe max 200 maybe max 100 depending on 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 what i'm feeling from the car you know a, a good one to say bathurst you know as you go over the top of the hill you know when it's too high because you come off the throttle and you just understeer off the track and that that's normally the diff related normally this is a bit too high so just reduce that and it'll allow it to, to sort of come in a little bit more dampeners will be for another video for for when we're talking about uh motec and how how to set this up okay aero now everyone knows what to do with ducks low ducks mean no air could pass through the brakes. Your brakes are going to overheat. Brakes are very important now after the last update. You need to keep them in the right temperature zone. Too cold and you do not get max brakes performance. So you really need to make sure they're in the window um, of what temperature. If it's any, if it's around 25C air, I normally three. Sorry, I normally four four. Okay, depending on tires as well, because opening the ducts does help save a little bit of tires as well. Um, it keeps them temps down like we're looking for but like I said you need to you really need to um, you really need to uh, balance this with in between tyres and braking because remember losing brake performance can cost you quite a lot of time as well okay now ride heights and wing you're going to say to me where would I run max rake max wing this now if you've heard about this has been patched so what was happening the bmw you could run max wing with i mean max ride out with no wing because the diffuser was just keeping the car like like there was no um, unstabability it actually made the car more stable but you can't do that no more so we're gonna we're gonna talk about how you would set this up now so for track like monza i always find running wing is faster for me i always do and my ride height is always, I would say, I like, I always, for me personally, I always come one click up off the ground on the front. I feel like it gives me that bit more rotation without having to use too much anti-roll bars on the rear. And then what I do, so for Brands Hatch, I would be pretty higher because I'm looking for a lot of rotation, not just through the anti-roll bars, as well Silverstone. You know, places like Spa, you're a little bit lower. So another thing as well, lower rear ride height is going to make the rear lower and it's going to make you quicker in a straight line. Obviously, the, the rear ride height, if it's higher, the car's more up like this. But you can sort of get around this with bump stop ranges, springs, and etc. So just remember this. The higher you go, you're going to get more rotation. Especially in slow speed and like high speed corners, you're going to get a lot more rotation the higher you go. Um, if you can't... If you can't... Get it out of anti-roll bars. So for me... I always, before I touch anything else, I always go to aero first. 
and I will do the one click like this and then I will go I go okay what track am I at I'm at Silverstone so I know for Silverstone I'm going to be around this mark maybe maybe like this you know especially tight tire twisty corners you know you, you you need that right height and like I said places like um places like Zanville, Brands Hatch, you're going to run a quite a high rate. You really are. And you're going to probably run a bit of a stiffer front end, softer rear end, because you're looking for slow speed traction, but then rotation as well. Where places like Monza, you're going to run it a bit lower, you know, because you want to keep that straight line speed with less. So the higher the rear comes off, the, the, the higher the rear ride height is as well, the less grip you have on the rear. So you need to adjust that with the wing. So you might ask me, where would I, what sort of wing would I run and where? So, uh, guys, my patrons know at Spa, we're running in between, I'd say, maybe five to six wing. Monza, everyone knows, zero to two. Um, anywhere else, I'm normally max or seven. Anywhere else. So brands hatch, you're always looking for max wing. And always in a wet, run, run max wing as well. Always run max wing in the wet uh, 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 as well. You know, so where's a, where's a good example? Okay, so going, I know I keep using Silverstone. Okay, so you've got your suspension, you've got everything sort of set how you want it, but you still have that tiny bit of understeer. Maybe try a click of rear, rear ride height to get a bit more rotation. This will help in slow speed, fast speed. Now, if you've got a lot of rotation on corner exit, like you've got oversteer on corner exit, Right, this is what I would do. I normally go one click down on the ride height and just see if that works. Sometimes that does fix it. If not, if not, come to the rear of the car, reduce the rear anti roll bar. So if it's slow speed, one click of rear ride height, maybe a bit of anti roll bar, or maybe you need to do one click of bomb stop rate on the front. And this will just help that entry. Sorry, sorry. I was talking about oversee. So don't worry about the bump stop rate. The rear bump stop rate on the rear. Maybe just give that a click lower. This will allow the spring just to just to squat a little bit more, push up, and maybe it'll just give you that grip, you know. Or go to tires and add one click a toe, you know, to 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 the rear. Yeah. Anyone got any questions or anything they would like to quickly maybe go over whilst whilst we're talking about it? Yeah. 